This review is going to be a little bit different as we'll be covering the four Dragon Ball animated films that are not canon to the show, existing mostly as retellings. Eventually, we will cover every movie in the franchise, their canon status, to build up the new one, Superhero. Coming soon. So let's jump right in. First up we have Curse of the Blood Rubies. Apparently, I had seen this before. I don't really remember it at all. Probably because it's just that retelling of the first arc in Dragon Ball in the most forgettable way. It's cute and it's endearing and it's fun. And it would be a really great kids movie if not for the super problematic Master Roshi and the far crazy, ridiculous fan service way women such as Balmer are depicted across this franchise. The franchise is near and dear to me, but the older I get, the more I notice and dislike that element. It's played for laughs and done a little differently here, but when you really think about it, it's Roshi asking for sexual favors. It may be a product of its era, but it's still wrong and it's all too common in anime. Goku's different voice actor is really strange to hear, and the whole movie is just so condensed. And I've heard Path to Power is better, and now that I've watched it, I can agree. But there's also, you know, the show that has Emperor Pilaf, who is much more hilarious than the villain here. It's far more memorable and I love him. This is a case where condensing and changing it just did not work as well because it's boring and completely forgettable despite some fun moments. I give Dragon Ball Curse of the Blood Rubies 2 out of 5 stars. Next up we have Sleeping Princess and Devil's Castle. Now for this one, portions here are just another retelling with references to canon with Goku's 8 form. What? But basically it's a retelling of Krillin and Goku meeting, but then it's surrounded by an original story, which I vastly prefer. Krillin and Goku are hilarious, adorable, fun. The plot is a whimsical, sometimes dark adventure that is enjoyable from start to finish. It all wraps up too quickly, but it's a good time despite the same problematic pervert tropes here and there. They grow tiresome, but are at least a little bit more downplayed here. My biggest problem other than that was for this one, the pacing can be a little sluggish. I also noticed that this one has a poor animation transfer, sound quality, and inconsistent scripting and acting in the dub. Some of that falls to my DVD, but I'm really glad I finally saw this one for the first time. I give Sleeping Princess and Devil's Castle three out of five stars. Mystical Adventure, way better than I remember. Wow. I hated this the first time I saw it, and I don't really remember why. It's sweet, it's got higher stakes, and a solid emotional core with many more fights. The problematic stuff is also way toned down. While another retelling, I'm beginning to appreciate these as Dragon Ball isn't my favorite, and on my rewatch of DBZ, I just like a shorter version of events. But at the same time, for certain arcs, I can't help but think about how much of the nuance, some of the fights, and how some of the overall story is lost by doing this, especially with the Tien's arc. He doesn't even speak to Goku in this. Overall, it's still a fun trip when rewatching for time's sake. A worthwhile adventure indeed, even if it's a bit too straightforward. I give Mystical Adventure a slightly higher 3.5 out of 5 stars. Finally, we have Path to Power. One part Blood Rubies remake and one part GT. It benefits so much from that latter point as the animation is breathtaking. Every frame is gorgeous and reminded me how beautiful this franchise can really be when they put the effort in. The story shockingly covers a lot of ground really organically, making me realize how much time is generally wasted in the anime show format sometimes. There's a decent emotional core and Goku is as likable as ever. It made me smile a lot. Once again though, it has a super abrupt ending. Back to the biggest problem with these and Dragon Ball, the original show in general. The sexual exploitation of underage female characters is such a problem. Many anime are guilty of this, Dragon Ball Z itself inc included, but much less often, and they're not underage. But Dragon Ball really runs with it. Two times are generally treated as comedic, like innocent situations, but the rest is for predatory fan service. And unfortunately, all of it was written that way. It was a part of the time and culture, but it's still gross and wrong. Times were different, so we can acknowledge it for what it was, but we reject it for what it is and I'm glad times have changed here. But the path to power is an entry point for many people. 2.5 out of five stars. All in all, these are a great way to condense more than half of the original Dragon Ball show. While path to power and Curse of the Blood Rubies cover some of the same ground, the former is, e is the easier one to recommend due to stronger production values and voice acting. And while I'm watching Dragon Ball, the show, for the first time the whole way through, I, I had only seen some of the big arcs. It really stands out that much of the story really could have been condensed. And I was wrong to think that all of the nuance is lost. Some, maybe, like with the end. And there's holes to fill, but really with a few episodes of the show, 
given the length of these, I really truly believe that the entire series of Dragon Ball, the original show, could be edited into a trilogy of two and a half hour movies and you'd be ready for DBZ. You could also cut out all the perverted tropey content meant for exploitation that drags these down, unfortunately. We firmly reject that and I'm glad it gets pushed to the side more so later on, like I said earlier. I can't wait to talk about the rest of the films. Remember, always look for the good.